since Morsi started his presidency in, in Egypt, uh, there were speculations that there will be uh, counter-revolutionary forces that would be trying to deliberately fail him or fail his attempt to make progress towards the transition towards democracy. People speculate that people call it the forces of the counter-revolution forces. Some some will blame it on the uh, the intelligence. Some will blame it on on the SCAF or the Supreme Council of Armed Forces. But in reality, I mean, no no matter how or who would be attempting to create those problems for for him or, or or even magnify the challenges, that does not take away that these challenges actually exist and people suffer from it day in, day out. So even if they were deliberate attempts from an, another force, the fact that he is not able to deal with it is a failure in itself. And this is what is disappointing people. Some people do not care whether these are like actual problems or made up problems that are instigated by, by different forces. They just care that they don't have electricity at their house. They, they care that they don't feel safe sending their kids to school. They care that they cannot have bread on their table because whatever the reason is, as a president, he, he did not succeed in, in providing that. His defenders or supporters would say it's too early to tell and Egypt's problems are way bigger than to be uh, assessed uh, or, or even solved in 100 days. I mean, the, t the time that people are giving for Morsi to, to, to just for people to hold him accountable to his performance. But at the same time, I mean, there are like basic things that he, he could not provide or he, he did not show that he had a firm stand on. Uh, one of the bold moves he started with at the beginning of his reign is that he uh, decided to reinstate the, the the parliament, which the constitutional court decided to like claimed invalid, and and then Scaf decided to to dissolve, and then he retracted back from that. So he did not seem to be like making like informed decisions, and he it did not seem it did not come out come across as. Uh, a president who has a plan. He is someone who is like, uh, again, like all the other political forces in the country, trying to appeal to, popul to, to, to the populist sentiments of the people and be become very like um, stable and show that he his legitimacy is coming from the people. And this is why he when he had his first speech in, in Tahrir, and this was th the message that he he extends his legitimacy from the people. Well now this is like deteriorating and, and this is like there is an erosion of this kind of support around him because of pe those people are actually suffering and they need to like have a safe, stable and sustainable life. Well, for the transition to get back on track, we need to go back to the actual challenges that we had before Mubarak's fall and look at where can we correct that institutionally rather than by changing personalities or changing individuals. So first of all, the main issue that we had was the, the, the dysfunctional judicial system and not just the independent again and saying this, but it's a dis dysfunctional judicial system that needs to be reformed. The second thing is that the uh, freedom of expression in the media at the beginning of the few, few months after the revolution and after toppling Mubarak, everyone was so optimistic with the newly formed uh, media outlets and, and there was hope that there will be more freedom in, in, in the media as a tool of holding the government accountable. But this has soon, I mean, it was like very short-lived and tenuous. And uh, again, we've seen how the media was controlled, especially the newspaper, by the the, main, the, the, the regime people, if, if we may just put it simply like that. And, and just again becoming another voice for, for the Supreme Council of Armed Forces. And this will be maybe replaced by the control of the Muslim Brotherhood or the Freedom and Justice Party of Morsi's people. I mean, it was uh, such a big disappointment, for example, when we have the uh, campaign manager of 
of President Morsi becoming the Minister of Information, which is like something that can does not indicate at all that we're going to have a really fair and in an open uh, media uh, system in the country. Uh, another thing we need to have. Uh, the security was one of the main issues and, and the, the issues that we suffered from. It was solved at the time of Mubarak in a very cosmetic, ugly way by like cracking down on any opposition and by torture in oppressive ways and uh, getting confessions by, by torture rather than actual institutionalized process of investigation. But at the same time, now that it has not been replaced by a better system, so what happens is chaos. It's just like people don't feel that there is, you know, policing that governors governs or guards. Uh, yes, the, the 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 oppressive tool is probably receding, but the security part is not re is not replacing the old system. So that's another thing. The issue of security affects the economy and in terms of like people coming to invest in the country and, if, and, and also tourism, which is, which is a big issue, uh, and, and investment. So, I mean, this is a huge um, problem that we are suffering from. I mean, I'm not even mentioning like the human rights parts of it, but because this goes without saying, but I mean, in terms of functionality, I mean, the security file is, should be on, on the top of the agenda of, uh, of Mercy. And then an overall issue is that we need to have the accountability mechanism put, put in place to just oversee all these, I mean, government bodies, tools, processes. We need to have um, a functional accountability mechanisms. On the higher level of governance, this can be done through the parliament. I mean, assuming that we're having, we're gonna have a fairly uh, elected representatives uh, and members of parliament but the, the, ha the bigger issue is that on the on the on the micro level on the local level in, in the municipalities and the local council this is the bigger issue that we we need to have accountability mechanism and this can only be achieved through civil society I mean, I mean yes a parliament can and parliament members represent their their their, their local uh, constituencies but on the local levels, we need to have functional organizations, civil society representatives, who would oversee the, f the performance of the local council. In order not to repeat the same system that happened before and replacing the members of the uh, National Democratic Party in Mubarak by the Muslim Brotherhood or group or the Freedom and Justice Party, because at the time of Mubarak, all the local councillors were members of the of the NDP party, and they were also part of I mean, uh, part of the government. They were civil ser servants as well, so they had this affiliation and interest with with the government. So they were not seen as actually working for the people or representing their problems and their issues, but they are people who are who have interest with the government, and, and there was no one responding to the demands of the people. So who would oversee all this other than civil society representative? In order to have that, we need to have laws that are conducive to like a, a vibrant and effective civil society in the country. So that brings us back to the issue of civil society organizations and supporting the freedom of association of NGOs and having NGO laws that, in it, that, uh, that would support such a functional civil society that would help oversee the performance of the local council and the people like working on the micro level of the country. To see how can after the condensed 18 days of the revolution and then toppling down Mubarak and then the disbursement of people like to, into different competing political forces, how can we get people to unite again? behind one cause in challenging, I mean, whoever is in power. What happened, if we go back to the beginning of the revolution, what happened is that people had unified demands and another factor is that they had the international support, I mean, in international support of the international community or support of the international community. So 
right now, I mean, first of all, there are two problems. I mean, we don't have this unity behind one cause. And it is very hardly, I mean, it's hard to claim that the international community understands the internal dynamics of Egypt really well right now. So the, you, you would see the representatives of the international community really perplexed, if we put it, I mean, like in a, in a very mild way, that they don't know who to side with and how, or how can they be useful. I mean, I think the best thing is that to have international organizations and, and, and human rights organizations, democracy watchdogs, I mean, support the voices in, I mean, the local voices in Egypt, when they are standing, I mean, in, in opposition of bad performance, if we may put it this way, of, of, the, uh, of the presidency or, 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 the, or the overall um, uh, governmental body. Um, I would say that I mean, people at the end of the day want to have a, live a decent life. And they can tolerate so mu for so much time, but after some point they will revolt. And we've seen sparks of this happening, like the, the incidents of the Nile City in Egypt and Zemelik, where some of the people from the slum areas attacked one of the affluent, I mean, commercial buildings in Egypt. There are very specific details about how and where this happened, but the specific details are not important. What's important, and we see this class in a revolt against these differences and people who are seen or appear to be living very, like, uh, in a kind of a luxurious life while other people kind of find the, the bread and are so struggling for, like, basic needs. Sooner or later, I mean, if, if the government or if Morsi uh, as a president does not lead the government into solving these problems or show steps into showing these problems, people will just revolt again against them. Uh, the fear is that, or, or the hope would be that it would be at least as peaceful as it was before, and the fear is that it might not be because I mean, this they would be coming from more of anger and um, uh, and from people who does not who do not have much to lose actually, and, and this is the basic biggest problem and this is how we've seen it manifestations like it's like someone was killed I mean that did not happen at the time of where people were killed by the security forces but did not I mean civilians did not kill each other in, in, in the first days of the revolution so uh, I think ha I mean support from international community pressure locally from uh, at least the, I mean the, the political leaders or the political elite to um, have open up me the media outlets, I mean, having more openness and freedom of expression so people can present their views. I think the smartest thing that president would do is that to use those voices in order to uh, get help on, on making the country functional because it's only going to serve him better. Uh, otherwise, I mean, he, he would be like very highly challenged with problems that he cannot deal with. Well, since the toppling of, of Mubarak, there were two processes going at the same time. It appeared to, uh, to be that we were having this procedural democracy where the SCAF were overseeing particular or certain steps in order to reach the transition and hand over power to a civilian government. So we're having a referendum, we're having parliamentary elections, presidential elections, and we're having a, a constitutional assembly to, to write the constitution. So these are like in the Western sense, of like procedural steps towards democracy. Whereas we have the street democracy where people are actually expressing themselves and saying their demands and, and, and revolting against uh, the injustice and, and oppression. Whenever there was uh, a point where like those two parallel processes in intersected, there was a disappointment on the side of the people in the street. I mean, like people were standing behind having and carrying out the the parliamentary elections and, and fought for not postponing it and, and and stood in lines proudly for the first time in their lives. I mean, 
voting for, for the parliamentary members to represent them, and then comes the performance even for a few months of the parliamentary members that came as a disappointment to the people. So if these these processes or those disappointment after intersection between street democracy and procedural democracy carries on, people will revolt again. I mean, and they will not be satisfied as long as they don't see good coming out of what they see in the Western sense as democracy, where people want freedom and justice.